somebody had a very active mind and instead of having a separate oven and a stove to cook things, why not build something where you can get a fire started there, be it firewood or charcoal, you're baking something at the same time that you're cooking a stew. <laughs> okay, so this is just like a clay oven, see? That's where you make the pizza. <laughs> so, and that's then and so forth. So, it, depending on how big a thing that you have here, you can also control how fast this wood is going to burn. You see? If you lay it out there, this segment of the wood is the one that's only going to burn because that's where the air is. This segment, even if it gets heated, is not going to burst into flame because there won't be enough oxygen or air. So there are many ways of controlling how fast the thing. But the problem with those things is you can't leave the thing too long. Somebody's got to push those things in. Okay, and now this one, where they have now modified this kind of stone, especially in the Hispanic area, so they have now made this a clear cement or sometimes a sheet of metal, so now they can cook their rocket stoves are really very simple to make. And, you know, see, these are just two things that make up their thing, they just make one segment at a time, you know, so then you just lay them on top of this other and so forth. And there's also been a significant improvement in this jerk stone. See, they used to just use cement filled in a can. But now they have used ceramic on top there. We'll preserve more the heat. And now the latest is that they've learned how to make thin sheets of mica. You know what mica is? Yeah, I've got a, a thin sheet glass component at that. And so it will retain the heat some more. And then you can control how fast or how slow this biochar are burning by controlling the air intake of that. Okay? And if you're going to fry some little white, then flip those things in there. And now you have <laughs> So, I have to uh, say, later on, the women told those stone makers they better stabilize that because they keep stirring and the thing will tip. So that's when it ended up having three legs in there, so now say, hooray for the women. <laughs> okay. Now, when they use all the firewood, hardly anything to make charcoal, then we can still teach them how to make cooking bricks out of paper, cardboard, no, thin little pieces of bark, leaves of grass out there, chop that's all up and put them in the fire, soak them for about three days. Okay? And PVC it can be found any place in the world. So cut a segment, drill a lot of holes, and then make a piston. You see, which is also just wood. And a pistol like this. And it's really oriented this way. So you pack this with all what you have squeezed and then orient it this way okay then put it in a frame where today all countries have wheeled vehicles and if there's a wheeled vehicle there has to be a jack yeah. no that's a given <laughs> so make a frame where when you activate the jack instead of raising things up it will power this going down see and squeeze all the water out you dry it in the sun you have a cooking brick but just remember don't light it down here you have to light it here 
because it's not work if you're going to lie there there's no oxygen you know will come and then you have to lie there. Yeah. I came to the States in the mid 50s coming from a farming family in the Philippines I also wanted to you see how do farmers here live or that so settled in central Illinois and let me tell you mid 50s a lot of outhouses and some people were still using road apples. And, uh, remember the, the road apples? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. People you know, know, you know what road apples are? No, yeah. Huh? You know what you're about. Oh. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah, she made a road apple pie once. It was <laughs> very good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs>